right, let's stay on the economic recovery here and bring in Michael Darda. Uh, he is chief economist and macro strategist at MKM Partners. Michael, always good to see you. Definitely want to talk on the CPI data, but a lot of focus right now this morning on what is going on with J&J, &J, that immediate pause in the vaccine. Is this development the type where you as an economist, you, you, will, you may cut your second quarter GDP forecast? I don't think so. Um, you know, the vaccine rollout has been intensifying, and J&J &J already had some issues with production and distribution. Uh, and so even if uh, the J&J &J is, you know, is halted indefinitely, um, I think we're probably rapidly heading to a situation in the U.S. where uh, vaccines, if anything, are in, are in surplus, meaning anyone that wants one can get one. Not only that, but if you look at the people that have had COVID and recovered, plus the population that's vaccinated, um, we're probably rapidly approaching um, a threshold where reopening can can, can intensify and, and broaden. And so I'm not too worried about this news in, in terms of slowing the recovery much. And I think even though you know the market has reacted, the reaction is pretty modest given some of the gains that we've seen, even the you know, even J&J, &J, uh, the pullback today is pretty small considering this news. Just keep in mind that these statistics, if we've had six people that have clotted out of six million doses, relative to the amount of cases that have been reported for COVID in the U.S. and the deaths, you've actually got an 18,000-fold higher probability of dying of COVID than clotting from the J&J &J vaccine. So let's just keep it in context, in, in my opinion. So, um, you know, Mike, before we got this news out of J&J, &J, we were certainly uh, all awaiting that, that CPI data and, and how we're thinking about inflation here. And, and I'm curious, you know, first, you know, what you make, if anything, of, of today's data, if it surprises one way or the other. But second, just the state of the conversations you're having with folks today around their worries over inflation. We've seen the backup at the long end of the curve. We've seen some stabilization in rates. So, you know, how are those conversations unfolding today? Yeah, great question. Uh, so in terms of the contemporaneous data, basically the CPI came in um, in line with expectations. Six tenths on the headline, three tenths on the core, just slightly above expectations, but nothing too surprising. Uh, we are moving into an environment over the next few months where we're going to see some pretty notable pressure on headline inflation. Headline CPI, I think that's widely expected, meaning if we get two more months where we get five tenths of a percentage point, um, increases in the headline number, we're going to be up above 4% inflation on a year-to-year -year basis. So we haven't seen anything like that since, you know, you got to go back to 2008. Now that was, you know, the beginning of the Great Recession. I think the, you know, the key differentiating, differentiating factor here is the economy is in a strong upswing now, not on its way down. And so for the Fed, what they're going to be more concerned about is labor slack. Does it continue to diminish significantly this year and critically pressures on core inflation. You mentioned the core rate just running at 1.6 year over year. So before the Fed really does anything, at least on rates, they're going to want to see that PCE, core PCE deflator, which tends to run a little below the, you know, the CPI statistics, at least at, if not above 2% and expected to stay there with a pretty fully recovered labor market. So that probably takes us into 2022 in terms of any potential Fed rate hikes. That's a little earlier than the consensus is expecting, but it's all going to be driven by the intensity of the recovery and how these inflationary pressures play out uh, regarding the core rate. That's really the, the critical variable for the Fed. So, Michael, we have some signs of inflation building. We have the JJ News. Are these you know, these are the type of events that, that light the fuse for this corrective market shakeup that you write about. Yep, uh, really important one. Um, I do think we have some risk in financial markets in the equity market, more concentrated in what we think of as the NASDAQ stocks, since the valuations there are trading at a 50% plus premium to what we saw in the last six years of the last business cycle when, you know, the rate structure was a bit higher than it is now, but not dramatically higher, a little over 2% on the 10-year Treasury. That's probably where we're headed with the V-shaped recovery if it continues. So I do think we have some uh, stock market risk concentrated in the 
super highly valued growth names in particular, uh, if long-term interest rates continue to move higher. You mentioned that they've stabilized recently. That is true. But in my opinion, that's probably a pause. And you know, the next phase here will be higher market interest rates as this recovery continues to intensify and, and broaden. And, you know, Mike, we're talking about the uh, beginning of a recovery and, and coming out of, of that recessionary environment we were in a year ago. Interestingly, today, um, Bank America's latest fund manager survey, two thirds of respondents say that the market's looking like a late stage bull market. I mean, is that meme kind of setting the table for the next way that consensus just finds itself flat footed as we get through the cycle? Everyone thinking, oh, it's got to be the end. It's got to be the end because it's you know been such an intense bounce off those lows. Well, I think what folks are looking at is the combination of high valuations, still low but rising discount rates, and a very intense V-shaped rebound and a lot of questions over where inflation is headed. And, you know, that fragile equilibrium, I think, is a, is a risk. I mean, a V-shaped recovery is exactly what you want when you're coming out of a ditch, but if it goes too far and we overshoot and overheat, what does that mean for market interest rates in an environment where valuations have exploded to the upside? You know, I mean, you have higher valuations in equity markets than anything we saw in the last cycle, in particular uh, for those growth stocks in the NASDAQ 100. And so I think we could be we could be running into some um, uh, troubled waters for some of these hyper valued growth names in an environment where inflation and market interest rates continue to head higher. And indeed, we will, uh, in fact, be on the lookout. Michael Darda, Chief Economist and Macro Strategist at MKM Partners. Always good to see you.